Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Outside the Box. I'm your host, Ben Rogers, and I'm with some new friends today uh, from TriStar Strength and Rehab. To my right, I've got Zach Jackson, and I've, I've completely thrown off their names prior to recording uh, on purpose, but uh, Zach, how's it going, man? Good, man. How are you doing today? I'm wonderful. Glad to have you. And then to his right, let me see if I got this right. This is Josh Davis. Yes, sir. <laughs> Josh Davis. They are both from TriStar Strength and Rehab. Guys, um, I want to start this conversation first around y'all do strength and rehab. So the way I interpret that is you're trainers, but you're also physical therapists. And that's a new thing, guys. That is like a, a new niche. Is that right? New niche? Yep, for sure. All right. So, so Zach, tell me a little bit about, about your background and about you know, this, you got a base in physical therapy, uh, but you also do strength training. What's that about? Yeah. So, um, uh, I went to ETSU, met Josh, uh, doctor's physical therapy. Um, I'm trying to just get my thoughts together real yeah. quick. So, uh, yeah, no, you know, when we went to PT school, we always had a background exercise, uh, wanting to help people get to their max potential. And when we go on these rotations, you know, with insurance models and stuff that kind of dictate what we could do. And we'd have to discharge people maybe when they're not ready to get back to a certain activity. And you're like, man, they just need a little bit more. And then once you start working out of school for a year, year and a half, that's when Josh reached out to me. He's like, man, you know, I've got this idea. And when he first told me, I was like, that's awesome. You know, and I thought, you know, we'd be done with that after a day or two and just go back on with our lives. And then we just kept going with it and like, oh man, this is really happening. So we love it. I wouldn't want to go any other way with it. We have the chance to work with people one on one, see them get back to the activity that they want to do, whether it's a power lifting goal, a sport, um, maybe somebody in their 60s that would like to get back to mountain biking. Yeah. So it's awesome to get to see that and work with them on a one on one aspect. Josh, I want to ask um, where did this idea come from? You know, Zach mentioned uh, y'all had a couple conversations around idea you had. Uh, where did that stem from? Was it something that you saw or was it, or did you, was it the fact that the system's broken or your interest just in a couple different areas? where did the idea come from? Pretty much all the above. I mean, it, it kind of started with, like I said, I'm basically a strength coach that is, has a doctorate. Yeah. I mean, clearly we don't have polos and khakis <laughs> on right now, so <laughs> this is our uniform. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it was something that in PT school, um, I actually had a clinical rotation in Scottsdale, Arizona. Um, and it was more of a cash-based model there, um, and they focused on just general health. And there were some aspects of training and that sort of thing. So I've always been into to exercising, lifting weights, that sort of thing, and had a deep um, interest in strength training. So while Zach and I were both in PT school, we obtained our CSCS, which is Certified Strength Conditioning Specialist um, certification, and honestly fell in love with that a little bit more than PT, as bad as that sounds. but. So with that being said, it led to me looking for alternative methods to treat the way that I feel people need to be treated and the way that they want to be treated as well. Because with the insurance model, the way that it is, it's very, very limiting. So that's kind of the system part that you, you were you know, talking about. Um, so yeah, I mean, it was something that, you know, I just kind of had a wild hair about me one day and called Zach and you know, we were buddies in, you know, you know, pretty tight in PT school and have very similar interests. And it was like, man, in this area, we are missing you know, a big component of rehab and then, you know, the, the training side. And a lot of people say bridge the gap, but we, we want to kind of find a new road almost. So where is, you know, that intersection of strength and rehab? Um, the way we've talked, we talked before we started recording was that they're kind of one in the same. Yep. And, and if, you know, people watching, if, if they don't know what that means, like, how would you, how would you guys talk about that? Like rehab and strength being the same thing because um in the way i approach exercise i'm approaching it from a standpoint of one i want to get stronger and two i don't want to get hurt you know both at the same time uh zach i'll start with you like how do you look at the strength and rehab intersection and how are they the same i think they're the same obviously you know with exercises and what you're doing in rehab and strength program and rehab the only difference is the volume and the intensity which you dose that. You know, mm. in rehab, we're bringing down the intensity and the volume, and then we're slowly building back up. You know, a lot of PTs have these ideas that there's such things called, oh, corrective exercises and all that. Well, no, that's not, you know, an exercise is an exercise. So we just, you know, if a patient's 
struggling with a barbell back squat. Okay, we'll break it down. We'll look at their single leg strength. Start reintroducing that with some rear foot elevated split squats and then and building up to tolerance. Uh, so that's a big thing, just volume and intensity management. Once we get to that certain point, we can reintroduce an exercise or a goal they, that they want to get back to. So, Josh, what did he miss? I, kn- I know he screwed up somewhere, right? <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> nailed so. it. I have nothing else to say. He <laughs> killed it. Uh, but, but no, I mean, truthfully, it's – you know, to me personally, and, and, and Zach agrees, I agree with everything he said, um, it comes down to what the person in front of you needs. Yep. And a lot of times, like we have two offerings, we have strength and then rehab, obviously, hence the name, right? right. Um, but what I mean by that is we have two funnels that we can put people into. Um, you know, if somebody's injured, then they go into the rehab side, but the intent is to strength train. So a lot of times with, you know, we have evals, it's hard to decide if the person needs to go in one direction or the other because it's all the kind of same thing to us. Um, so whoever comes in, you know, obviously not everybody has to touch a barbell. That's not like a requirement. It's definitely, you know, encouraged. Um, you know, you should have some calluses on your hands a little bit, you know what I mean? Um, but when it comes to progressive overload, I think um, the rehab side is grossly under dosed, under loaded, um, you know, a lot of PT clinics, if you looked at their equipment, might have a 20 pound kettlebell. We want our clinic eventually, that's our long-term goal, to be a gym that we practice out of. Um, because I mean, to us, like that's, that's what it's about is the longevity of the person that's in front of us and rehab may be the first step, kind of what Zach said, but it leads right in to strength training. How, uh, what you guys see, because I know you guys see, uh, you know, athletes of all ages. Um, and I, I say that intentionally because I think we're all athletes to a degree. Sure. You know, we approach life as an athlete. Um, do you think most of the injuries you guys are treating come from weaknesses? So, like, uh, if somebody comes in with a, with a hurt back, are you trying to address the injury plus the weakness that might have uh, – cause that injury is that what you're seeing I, I just don't know the like the background of that yeah I mean I think that's I think it's it's very multifactorial so it could be positioning um, it could be poor form I mean you know it could be just the load exceeded tissue tolerance which a lot of times the thing is going to calm down if you give it time like low back pain typically resolves between you know six to eight weeks if you don't do anything hmm. now keeping it you progressing that's where we come in and we can kind of you know a couple sessions we can calm down the pain um, get you back to not being terrified to move because a lot of times you know the old school thought is you know rest you know the whole rice thing you know elevate compress all that kind of stuff so if we can avoid that and get you moving in different ways that still you know keeps you engaged in the activities that you love because a lot of times you can go to primary care and they say stop doing that well, it's like, what if I love to do that? Now you're right. taking out a huge part of my life that I need there. And it's, you know, like, for instance, if somebody hurts their knee, we can still train upper body. That's the beauty of cash based, which is what we are, is, you know, we can treat you as the whole person, not just the diagnosis, if that makes sense. No, it's, it's fascinating. And you know, one thing you said there that, that I can really resonate with is you know, I feel like when someone gets injured, they're, you know, the, the, um, what you want to do is basically don't do anything. Mm-hmm. So I think that's how we actually become stiffer as we get older is we um, we restrict the types of movements we make because we don't want to get hurt. Can you all kind of speak to that? Like I, I've dealt with it myself with rotational stuff mm-hmm. where um, I stop rotating and all of a sudden I'll, I'll just start hurting. Like, uh, Zach, I'll start with you. Like how, um, how often do you see injuries cause – lack of movement, lack of, um, activity. And then that like reinforces stiffness and then it just becomes a, a cycle. Are you guys seeing that cycle at all? Yeah. I mean, I think Josh kind of talked about this a minute ago. Um, you know, I'll see every day with their patients in their thirties, forties or fifties. They're like, well, you know, I haven't deadlifted or done this because you know, I just, I just can't do that anymore. You know, right. and, and you ask, why, why can't you do that? Well, I'm 40 or 50 years old. I, I don't want to, yeah, I don't want to hurt myself. And, you know, that's not the case at all. You know, you need to be doing that. That's a functional movement. Do you pick groceries up off the ground? Do you pick up your kids, your grandkids? Well, yeah. All right. You need to be strong to be able to do this. So our big thing is getting rid of all these, you know, fear mongering behaviors and helping people regain confidence. Oh, I can do this. You know, just got to make sure we reintroduce appropriately with volume and intensity, have good technique. 
next thing you know, I mean, these people, you know, they go out and do, start doing CrossFit, you know, they'll go out running, mountain biking, whatever. So it's, it's good for us to be able to talk to people and provide that education because I think, um, you know, with healthcare, I think over the past 20 or 30 years, you know, that's been the thing, you know, oh, you got to stop doing these lifts. We hear it all the time. Like the deadlift clinic we had on Tuesday, people were like, well, I've got a bulging disc, you know, I can't deadlift. Well, that's not, yeah, it's, why? You know, well, you know, and, and they can't give you an answer. Right. So we just tell them, all right, look at your technique. We'll train around it and get you back to it slowly but surely. So um, a big part of it is just education. And when we do that, we see good results from it. Where do you think we have, you know, gone wrong just as a whole? Because you mentioned education. Why are people feeling that way? Like, why are, like, they have a pain, and then they become scared of certain movements. I know you mentioned the uh, the deadlift. I know the squat's the same thing. Mm-hmm. You know, people are squ- uh, afraid to do squats. Josh, what do you, what do you think, uh, why do you think that's happened? Like, why, when we are feeling pain, why do you think we're scared to do these movements? And, and what movements do you suggest we don't ever stop doing? Yeah, I mean, I think when it comes to, like, the first ones that come to my head, knees over toes, kind yeah. of what we talked about before, deadlifts, like, in PT school. Like, we had, like, a whole, we'll call it a gaggle of people that were in there, <laughs> you know, strength guys in, in PT school that, you know, some of the professors would look at us like, you want to deadlift somebody? They just had, you know, low back pain. We need to get or their multifidi firing or transverse abdominis. It's like, well, that's, that muscle's going to fire regardless. So, <laughs> like, you know, let's, let's train in a functional matter. So I think it comes down from, I think it comes from the top. I mean, I think historically, kind of what Zach said earlier is, you know, there are some primary care physicians or surgeons or whoever that have demonized certain movements. And it's just like a learned thing. It's like, okay, yeah. well, I shouldn't deadlift because like Zach said, I'm too old or I've hurt my back in the past. Well, then you ask them why they can't tell you because they've not been told. So I think that's where the education side comes from. And as far as the second part of your question, movements that I feel sh- everybody should do, lunges, everybody hates them, but it's gait cycle, going through you know deep hip extension, knee flexion over, over the front foot, um, squats for sure, deadlifts for sure, overhead press for shoulder mobility. Um, I mean, if you want to get a good pump, you know, get a little bit of bench press in, you know, whatever. Um, but, but truly, I mean, I think it, it boils down to your lifestyle and what you want to get out of life. And, you know, like I said, we're not going to shove some, a barbell in somebody's hand if they're going to be, uh, you know, like a cyclist or something like that. Because it's not, I mean, it can help as far as mentality goes, but, you know, we want to be as, as specific as possible to that person's life. And I think those few motions that I mentioned is what Zach said earlier. They're very functional. You're going to be picking up grandkids, hopefully for a long time, if you, you know, if that's one of your goals. If right. not, you can watch them from the playground, you know, <laughs> sitting there. But I don't think anybody wants to be on the bench like that. So, you know, I, th- I, th- I think it's those, those big movements are huge. Yeah, I love that. You mentioned um, knees over toes, and we were talking about knees over toes guy, which is huge on YouTube. We've all watched him. Um, what is like when you say full range of motion what does that mean like what does that mean to you zach is is full range of motion the from a joint standpoint because i I actually don't know (laughs) so you know our big philosophy is that we want to train throughout the full range that that joint has so you know if if you go into the gym you you know we talked about it a little bit ago you will see these guys that you know just do these partial reps get this crazy pump but then again, and, you know, we were talking to your dad about it, you know, you know, he was t- telling us that, you know, someone recommend he only go to 180 on back extension. And it's like, well, you know, in everyday life, you know, you're going to be put in positions and activities that's going to exceed that. You know, you need to be strong throughout the full range, not just, you know, 60 to 90 degrees and the rest doesn't matter. You know, we want people to be able to have a full depth squat, be able to have good hip hinge mechanics. Like Josh said, good shoulder mobility. We want to maximize that potential, and by working through full range of motion, we're able to do so. Josh, like, how do you work through full range of motion? Is that, um, is it just an intention, or are, are you working different parts of the the movement at different times, or is it just like a you know you mentioned the the you know the people are trying to knock out thirty pull ups, but you know they're like half pull ups. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is it just a matter of just uh, going fully extended and, and all the way up, or, or is there more to it? Yeah, so there, there's definitely more to it. You know, I, again, I'm harping on deadlifts as if that's like the only movement I do. But <laughs> Josh is the deadlift king. Exactly. Deadlift I king. I should have like that tattooed on me. <laughs> yeah. <somewhere. laughs> but, um, but no, I mean, for instance, you know, with a deadlift, somebody's very acutely injured. 
you probably shouldn't be pulling from the floor. So that's where the limited range of motion will help us kind of manage the the programming. So we would start them off, and again, with our programming, we go full body. So you know, you'll be getting certain days. You might have a pulling day, lower body pull, upper push, something like that. You know, so we want to start them from pulling from blocks. What I mean by that is, it's an elevated surface decreases the amount of hip hinge you have to perform. While we can perfect the hip hinge motion and load the tissues that should be loaded. And then once they are tip top, we feel good with what they're doing, they're moving some good weight, and they're hitting their percentages that we give them, or their RPE, which is rate of perceived exertion. It's kind of like their zero to 10, like 10 is like, I can I cannot lift it type thing. Um, then we can start lowering the motion. Kind of same deal with your squats. Box squats are great. So, you know, sitting down to a box, and you progressively lower the box so you don't need a box at all. Um, but that's something that is, that's what we, you know, we're obviously geek out on exercise. Um, we're not super big on passive modalities. So can, we, can you, what is that passive modality? Yeah. So you're looking at like massage, uh, ma- you know, manipulation, anything that something that is done to you that you don't have to move. There's Got it. Nothing wrong with those things. So don't get me wrong. They have their place, but it's something that should be used in conjunction with a good exercise program, um, to make a good, well-rounded program. So, yeah. As you're talking and you're mentioning the box, I, w- I was thinking a lot of like, okay, there's two different movements there. There's one, if I'm seated down, the getting up, yep. and then there's also the going down part. What, what's the correct uh, terminology for that? It's like uh, extension and flexion, or uh, I know I'm wrong. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so the lowering phase is the eccentric. Is Got that it. what you're talking about? Yeah. Yep. And, and then going up is concentric. And that's something that we can utilize if somebody is like, acutely injured we use tempo because that's going to automatically limit the amount of load that they can use because if you try to you know say a back squat try to lower 315 for like a four second negative so lowering it for four four mississippis good luck because you're not getting back up (laughs) you know what i mean so that's that's kind of how we can manage the total volume which is what zach said from the jump is you get three sets of 10 on a yellow theraband at traditional therapy well, that's not what you get with us because you're going to get a full program that has range of motion. You know, kind of everything that we've been talking about this whole time, we want to look at those things, and we have time to do so. Yeah, I love that. And, you know, these guys, of course, they're, they're cash-only physical therapists who are also trainers. It's a new way of doing physical therapy, and I, I, I firmly believe that this is going to be the future of physical therapy. Absolutely. And um, do you guys have people come in – just for training or do you generally have people come in from an injury and then go into training what's the what's the typical like intro so i know it varies too it, it does <laughs> um but if, if someone comes to us you know if, if they're dealing with a, if it's an injury specific like josh mentioned we're probably going to push them more to the rehabilitation side if they're coming in hey my goal is to squat 500 pounds do you have any pain or and we'll go through a full evaluation with them to properly see if there's anything we can work on if they're good then we'll put them more on a strength program so we have three different rehabilitation packages 6 10 and 15 and just depending on what the injury is how long we think it's going to take to get back that's what we'll recommend to the patient or client and then we have three rehab options so the first one's just an online strength training program it's online nothing in person you know maybe if, if someone was living in Knoxville and, and couldn't come up to see us, boom, here you go. Uh, there's another one called the Strong Err Program, which has a few more in-person visits with us just so we can check in and just fine tune things. And then there's a graduation package, which for the folks that we put on the rehab side, once they're done, they want to continue with their progress and their gains, we'll put them on that graduation program. Um, so those are three different packages. You know, the big thing that we have to do, especially being cash based, and I know you guys know this, is debunking all the insurance stuff you know yep. well can I use my insurance well no and then you have to explain why and then when you take them through the scenarios that all right if you've got the shoulder issue going on I think we can get you back in, in six visits better in six visits versus if you go to the traditional outpatient PT who you're just going to be passed around to different PTs techs even students and it might take 25 visits well if your copays 40 or 50 bucks each time and the amount of time you're having to take going back and forth from work, you know, maybe having to get grandma to pick up the kids, you're better off to go cash base. And the long run, we're actually cheaper. Mm-hmm. You know, one on one, you don't, you know, if Josh has somebody one on one, I have somebody one on one, we're doing all their programming, it's tailored to them. And I know Josh does too, but I check in on my clients probably every two or three days, just text them, hey, how you feeling? You know, what's going on? And yeah. 
and uh, it just holds people accountable, you know. Um, so that's kind of their model. You know, um, talking about the cash base thing, I, I think one of the things we we have to do, just everybody is, is talk more about the economics behind it because I really think it's misunderstood. And um, it, you said that it could be – probably is cheaper to come to a cash-based PT versus going 25 visits with a copay uh, within the traditional model you know and that's not even mentioning the the type of care you're getting and you know we talk a lot about how insurance in that model can actually dictate the care you know whereas you guys are only incentivized to help the patient or client you know whatever whatever they're there for that's what you're going to focus on versus, you know, in the traditional model, you know, in the back of every provider's head is, okay, I know what I need to do, but I also got to figure out how, how are we going to get reimbursed for this visit? So you have to go, go a roundabout way of doing things, which could take a little bit longer. So I'm super proud of you guys for, for stepping out, you know, going outside the box. That's what this podcast is called and, and doing your thing. Um, I, I do want to. I want to touch on one thing, if I can remember, because uh, I, now I got on a tangent with with cash, <laughs> with cash pay. But you guys have an event coming up. Uh, tell us a little bit about the event and who who it's for. What you guys are going to be doing? Because there's going to be a lot of interesting things happening at that. Uh, Josh, I'll start with you. Yeah. So we're going to have an event called Summer Slugfest. Um, it is an all skills camp for baseball, softball players ages eight to eighteen. Um, so Zach and I will be running the injury risk reduction portion of the of the event. It's going to be at Westridge High School on August 27th from 9 to 1 p.m. Um, and the idea is that, like I said, injury risk reduction. There are some holes in training, especially with these travel you know athletes that are playing year round. Um, you know we've seen a lot of research here lately that's showing that if they play one sport, you're more likely to get injured because of the same motions constantly. So we try to get them out of certain movements while also working on the ones that are like kind of the core movements. Um, so that's what Zach and I will be doing for the event. And then Jackson Greer, who's a former catcher at University of Tennessee, um, he is a skills instructor. So he's going to be going over infielding, outfielding, hitting, running, the whole nine. Um, and he's great. He's going to be bringing four other guys with him. So. We're going to have a good time. We're going to have slip and slide at the very end. Nice. Um, you know, so, I mean, that's kind of the thing, the outside the box. You know, as a PT clinic, we're trying to, you know, reach out to the community, you know, build a solid community within that and kind of, you know, project a little bit kind of what we believe in. That's phenomenal. And one thing I did not mention, guys, uh, that this guy right here is actually my grandmother's personal trainer. <laughs> Um, Zach, can, <laughs> can, you give us, can you give us an update on how my grandmother Mary's doing? Mary's doing good. Uh, when I left, uh, she was playing, what's that card game? Bridge. Yeah. She's in a bridge tournament, and I think she's doing pretty well. But uh, Mary's a hard one to catch, and, <laughs> and I'm super proud of Mary. She, I use her for examples in the exercise class at the facility I'm at, as well as with other patients. You know, they're like, man, Mary gets around so good. Mary, you know, is up in her 80s, but she looks like she's 70, and she's walking faster than the 35-year-old executive director there. <laughs> so, so it's it's not a lie. So it's true. So uh, she does great, but taking care of your body, yep. working out, Good. just okay. being active and not stopping. That's you know that's what we want everybody to get to. We want everybody to experience that one day, and it's just you know we just try to provide as much education as we can to hopefully get a bunch of Mary Banks running around in their Subarus at uh, <laughs> 80, and they're 86 years old. So she's, she's doing great. I love it. Thank you for that update. Shout out to my grandmother, Mary. Um, Josh, real quick, tell us how everybody can find TriStar Strength and Rehab. Where can we find you online? What What's your socials? Where are you guys located? Yeah, so website tristarstrengthxrehab.com which i know is obnoxiously long and i do apologize for the, apologize for that when i made it it was like a good idea but <laughs> i can't shorten it now because i've already paid for it <laughs> um, but social media um you know we actually put out quite a bit of content on nice. social media um i'm a new dad so i've got congrats. six weeks thank you thank you thank you That's that doesn't amazing. get old uh, here congrats so, um but yeah so we've got a program coming out right now that every, you know once a week we call it only dads and moms so it's it's a workout that we put out you know free workout so it's on our instagram tristar strength and rehab 
strength x rehab <laughs> um, <laughs> um but yeah we're on facebook as well um we've got a facebook page um and then zach's gonna be doing some forum breakdowns here soon um but yeah i mean we're we stay pretty active on social media that's amazing guys uh you can find those links in the description if you're on youtube and also in the show notes if you're on podcast so be sure to check those out for you know we got movement we got a lot of information there on y'all social channels so thank you for that uh guys i can't tell you how much i appreciate the time today Thank you for having us. appreciate it. It's been a blast. You guys are a blessing to the community. Uh, To the listeners out there, thank you all for hanging out with us again. This is Outside the Box. I'm your host, Ben Rogers. As always, we'll see you guys next time. Don't go away. Great job. Good. That was rocking.